Hey there, Dengo Stu here. In today's video, we're gonna be taking the drive shaft out of this Yamaha gearbox. In last week's video, we replaced the oil seals around the drive shaft on a Honda outboard. To remove the actual drive shaft, it's a very similar process to begin with. So I'm gonna take the water pump off and the seal housing. We'll get all that away, so we're back to being able to see the bearings for the drive shaft. Same as the Honda, and in fact, most outboards, this uh, Yamaha just has four bolts holding the water pump housing on. Now just the impeller, which is actually looking very worse for wear. It's very, doesn't have any sort of spring left in it at all, this one. Woodruff key is quite stuck on this one. This Woodruff key is really stuck, so I'm going to have a go at sort of punching it out. It's very important that you never use a uh, screwdriver as a chisel. It's yours. This Woodruff key really doesn't want to budge, so I'm just going to put a bit of heat on it, see if we can get it out. Outboards always have big issues with corrosion, it's half the battle, but I've never had a Woodruff key that stuck. We've used heat a few times to get things unstuck and it's great. Metal expands, even if it expands and contracts again, it just helps break that corrosion barrier. But I don't think I've ever really sort of talked much about the setup I use for heat. So I'll show you the two options I've got. This one here is just a normal kind of nine kilo LPG bottle with a regulator on it and then one of these sort of aerating nozzles. It's pretty hot, can certainly get steel glowing hot and it's really cheap. The other one I use, is one of these little oxy map gas setups. Nice and portable, really light. The oxygen's pretty expensive, it lasts about 10 minutes and it's $40 a bottle. I've had this setup for quite a while. I sort of bought it for home use originally. In a big workshop, yes, you're better off sort of with the rented uh, acetylene and oxygen bottles. But if you're only using them infrequently and you want it for home, these sorts of setups are pretty commonly available from auto stores. These kits aren't really hot enough to cut steel, but they're definitely hot enough to get most corroded parts apart. For this job, I'm just going to use this LPG because it'll be more than enough for getting this corrosion apart and there's no expensive oxygen that you're burning up. A viewer commented on last week's video saying that rather than spraying WD-40 when you heat because it vaporizes so quickly that you should try using a bit of beeswax rubbing it on and then letting that sort of get drawn in by a bit of a capillary action. I don't have any here at the moment so I'm just trying a bit of marine grease. The reason I do spray WD-40 as well as being a lubricant is often to try and cool the parts while try and heat the outside part and then obviously heat will conduct to the inside part and often I'll spray the inside part to try and cool it as well to make that part shrink and the outside part expand. So I've put a bit of grease on it, we'll put some more heat on it, see what happens. That's officially the Woodruff key from hell. Now it goes without saying this oil seal housing below that plate is heat affected, not really usable. I don't really have any immediate plans to repair this gearbox. So I'm not really worried about it. Otherwise, maybe I would have found another way to get that corroded Woodruff key out. But what I've done here is I've put a couple of screws into this housing and I'm going to use the slide hammer just to pull it out. If the gearbox is in better condition, you're trying to keep it, you can sort of try and pry it out with screwdrivers, but I'll show you what I'm going to do here. So what I've done here is drilled into this housing and put a couple of just self tapper screws in. Be careful though, because just below this are the bearings and if you're looking at protecting those, then you don't want to drill or screw these too deep. Now they're in there, I'm just going to put the 
uh, vice grips and the slide hammer onto these and we'll pull this out. If this was in better condition than it is and I was looking to repair this gearbox, particularly using this part, I'd be looking at trying to sort of pry this out using a couple of screwdrivers, but in this case I'm just going to yank it out with the slide hammer. Below the oil seal housing we've got this washer and then below that we've got the main bearings for the drive shaft. The next thing we're going to do is pull the bearing carrier out of this gearbox so we can get to the pinion nut at the end of the drive shaft itself. Before we do that though I'll show you quickly one of the reasons why this gearbox was destined for the scrap bin and why I'm not being particularly careful about pulling it apart. So you can see up here the top lug on here is completely broken on the casing. That's not the end of the world for the whole gearbox, you can buy a new bearing carrier but to be honest with you we've got quite a few of these lying around and this had a few other problems as well so it's not really worth saving. This puller is set up with just two hooks behind the veins of the bearing carrier and I'm just going to go grab an impact gun and we'll wind this out. Before I do that I'm going to put a bit of heat on here I could sort of try and pull it first and then see whether it needs heat, but I figure rather than putting extra strain on it, I'll just put a little bit of heat on the outside of the casing, the main part of the gearbox, and then we'll start putting some pressure on the puller. The newer the outboard, the less heat you're going to need, and also the more worried you might be about the heat affecting the paint. The older the outboard like this, the harder it's going to be to get off, unless you're worried about the paint, because there's probably not much left like there is on this one. That wasn't too bad. A lot of this kind of salt corrosion you always see on aluminium, but other than that, it came out pretty easily. I'll show you what's remaining inside the gearbox now and what we've got to do next. Inside of the back there, the large gear you can see facing us is the forward gear. And then at the top there, you can see there's the pinion gear, which is on the end of the drive shaft. What's probably a little bit hard to see is there's a little bit of a nut showing on the bottom of that pinion gear and we need to get that nut undone so that we can drop the pinion gear down and slide the drive shaft up. You can get a spanner onto that pinion gear but I'm going to be a little bit lazy and use the actual Yamaha tool for this. I'll show you the part number just in case you're interested. That's it there. So what this tool does is it has a socket on the end here that goes onto the nut and then it's sprung loaded here. So when I put it in, I can push it down and then rotate it slightly and it locks in. So I'll show you what that looks like inside. So what you can see is it's essentially just a socket that goes onto the nut on the end of the drive shaft that holds the pinion gear on and there's a spring at the bottom section that just applies a bit of pressure up on the nut so it saves you sort of holding it in place. Now what I need to do is turn the drive shaft. Don't be hung up on that tool though. It's kind of a cool thing but you can do it with a spanner. What we need to do now is rotate this drive shaft counterclockwise to wind that nut off. To grip these drive shafts, you can get these little tools which have splines on the inside and then just a hex on the outside that you can drop onto this drive shaft. I can't find the one that's the right size for this drive shaft. So all I'm gonna do is use a pair of vice grips on the shaft itself. Now. Any area of the drive shaft where oil seals run, very much as we discussed last week, is something you need to be very careful of. But gripping it in the middle, you're not going to do any damage to it. It might get a bit scratched up, but it's not going to affect anything. So I'm just going to use a pair of vice grips on here, and then we're going to start winding it out to undo the nut at the bottom. The nut's held still by that tool. You might want to have a second person just holding the spanner in place while you wind it. It's much easier with two people if you don't have that sort of tool locking it in place for you. So there we go. You could feel it took quite a bit of pressure then, but as soon as the nuts unlocked, it'll just wind off. Once we wound it a few times, sitting in the cup of this tool or in your spanner or socket, whatever you managed to get in there, 
you'll see here, this is the nut that came off the end of it, relatively thin nut. So now we can pull the drive shaft straight up. The pinion gear is just dropped down into the gearbox, so I'll fetch that in a second. So at this part, you've got your tapered roller bearing. The race for the bearing is still inside the gearbox housing. Then you've got a section just above it that your oil seals run on. Down here on this section, you'll see there's a bit of a spline section that pinion gear went on, and just the thread here for the pinion nut. So if you look in here, you can see this section here. This is the race that that taper roller bearing ran across. Very similar to sort of boat trailer bearings if you're familiar with those. Down the bottom is a needle roller bearing that supports the lower end. But I think it's a little bit hard to see on camera. If I look up above that uh, forward gear you can see the bearings just up there, that needle roller bearing. A little bit tricky to see from this angle too but that's where it lives. But down the bottom, we can see the pinion gear drop down there, so I'll fetch that out. To stop anything getting lost, I'm just going to pop the pinion gear back on the shaft and then loosely wind that nut back on. So that's what it was looking like in its original state inside the outboard gearbox. You might be wondering at this stage why we're actually doing this job of removing the drive shaft. And I guess there's a few reasons you might want to do it. You need to remove it in order to replace the pinion gear you need to remove it to replace any of the bearings that are in it. You need to remove it to get to the forward gear that's behind the pinion gear. So if you've got trouble with any of those components, the first step in fixing that problem is removing the drive shaft. Next thing I'm going to do in this video though is remove the forward gear so you can see what's involved in that and then we'll talk a bit about the bearings. To get the forward gear out, now the drive shaft and the pinions out, we're going to need another special Yamaha tool, otherwise known as your finger, because you can just hook it out. What you see here is another taper roller bearing, which is what the prop shaft drives on, and the gear itself. You need a bearing separator and a press to get these apart, but getting the unit out is pretty straightforward. Now we've got the forward gear out, I'll show you what's behind that, which is the gear selector, or the cam for it. Before we look in behind that forward gear though, we'll just have a little refresher on how these gearboxes work. So you have your drive shaft come down, and this pinion gear mates with what's the reverse gear here, and the forward gear. These gears are free to spin, so as the motor's idling in neutral, both gears are spinning. The reverse gear is spinning this way, and the forward gear, which would sit here, is spinning the other way. What happens then is the gear selector pushes on this little selector rod, which pushes this dog clutch across. The dog clutch is splined to the shaft, the prop shaft, and as soon as it engages a gear, the prop shaft starts spinning either in the reverse gear if it's connected here, or the forward gear if it's connected here. What moves this little dog clutch sort of gear selector linkage is what's behind that forward gear. So if I rotate the gear selector here on the top, so what you can see there moving is a little cam lobe that pushes on that linkage to either engage reverse or forward or sit in the middle and be in neutral. Just below and to the right of that cam lobe you can also see the drain plug that drains the oil out of the gearbox. Inside there also in front of the that cam lobe the round section you can see the shinier section is the race this bearing runs on. So in order to replace this bearing, we need to pull that race out and also separate this and pull this using a press, pull the bearing off here. We might do that to replace the bearing itself, or we might do it because the teeth are damaged on this forward gear. Now I'm not sure this video showed you how to do anything particularly useful, and I apologise for that, but I didn't really have a job to do with this outboard. I was just pulling this gearbox apart because it was actually headed for the bin and I thought why don't I just take it apart and show you how it all sort of fits together. When I next need to do it I'd like to show actually separating the bearings, pulling the races out and replacing them. I'd also like to maybe go through putting a new dog clutch and a new gear set in. Anyway, I hope if nothing else this video gives you a better idea about how these gearboxes hang together. Before we finish up though I've got to show you something pretty funny. I was cleaning out my dive gear because it's summer now in Australia so I'll be doing a bit more diving over the next few months 
And in my kit, I found this original open water paddy course um, certificate, that's essentially the ticket they give you when you pass the course. Now, these tickets don't ever expire. You just do the course once and that's it. And the photo on it is, it's a little bit boy band, I've got to say. All right, well, thanks for watching. Please rate, comment, and subscribe, and I'll catch you next time. See ya.